Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling a Zim Buell. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at how we can make generative art using noise. So there's a new noise class in Zim 6.2.0, so let's go take a look. If we go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com and look under Examples, there's the noise right there. So we click on Noise, and here it is. So what we're looking at here is 2D noise, except it's not quite in the way that you imagine. We're actually using one-dimensional noise. So noise is like randomness, but this is a special noise where instead of it being fully random, the noise relates to one another, so it, it makes these beautiful patterns. Okay, so in this case, we're using 2D noise, and the one part of the noise, the first one of the noises, is, is saying the height of the line at this point, and another one here, and another one here, etc. So the height of the line. The second dimension of the noise is animating the line. It's saying in time, um, it sort of moves it in time, and yet it's related enough that it doesn't just jump around all over the place, it actually moves the position around. Isn't that just beautiful? So that's one example. Uh, the scarf is similar. The scarf uses um, the same idea except we've made curves. Okay, and you can uh, adjust the amount of curves here with this thing. So there we've got other thing like that. And we can adjust, um, now we've got sliders and controls and stuff. And we can adjust how quickly this animates. Are you ready? So this is um, as we're, we're using a ticker to animate, and we're just increasing the second dimension just by a little bit, like 0 0.001. And so here we go. If I, if I reduce that even more, like that, do you see how we're hardly animating now? And oh, now it's like smooth ribbons. Let's pull that up just a little bit more. Isn't that neat? Or we can animate it a lot. And here's what it looks like animated a lot. Ooh, it goes up and down, and it seems to get faster too, doesn't it? So, uh, what else do we have? These are the number of lines. So here we are increasing the number of lines. We let's just reduce this a bit so they're back to curves again. There they are at curves. This says how high they can go. This one, wow! So that's higher. Let's. That's all right, and and this one, by the way, let's see, reduce that a bit. Sorry, to do to do to do to do, not as high. What do you think? A bit more on this one. Wow, wow, wow! And then that one just shows our art that we're making. Cool, huh? I like it. Uh, here it is. What it looks like with um, hardly any. Uh, line. So this is just sort of getting itself there. We put tweening on that. So as we adjust that slider, it tweens that value and it makes the transition more smooth. Otherwise, it kind of um, can look a little messy. Neat. Oh, and let's reduce that a bit. So now we've got just sort of one ribbon going. Or, well, we had one ribbon before, but only one or two bumps there. Nice, huh? Okay, let's take a look at another one. Here's the mesh. So now instead of, um, instead of animating the height, uh, we're animating both the height, and, or sorry, not the height, but uh, the, the Y. We're animating both the X and the Y. And then we're uh, using a third dimension to um, animate all of it. Okay, so this is 3D noise, but we're really animating, we're using one of those dimensions to animate and the other one to do the 2D. Nice. We've got all sorts of sliders here. Uh, let's see. This will increase the, the speed again. So that one does the same thing where they go farther. This is the number of lines it's doing. Let's reduce that. Uh, it's a little bit of a mess in here. Uh, I think this one is the size of them. So that makes it bigger. And this one is how long we animate for. So if you go faster, it may be that it starts to get... Um, uh, Let's see, did we go faster? Which one? Yeah, we've gone faster here. 
So it may be if you've got a if you've got a long time like this, it'll just keep on filling up and filling up and filling up, and it looks like it's sort of filling up too much. Oh, I know why this is a little bit sparser than I thought, because we're only using one line as it goes through. As soon as we start using multiple lines, you see that it starts getting a bit complex. Okay, and so this is the time that it will run for. And if we reduce that, it'll get less complex. So now, I think we were kind of halfway through that when we were adjusting. So now it'll finish faster. I should have. <laughs> Let's try that again. We'll put it at its very shortest. Um, yeah, when you're running fast, it helps to run short. So there we go, that's short. This one, if you run short, you may want to increase the alpha. So there we are running short. And once again, I think I showed you that last time that collapses so that you can kind of admire uh, what you're creating. Okay, but if you're if you're reducing this so that it's um, it animates more slowly or seems to, you see how now that's animating more slowly, you would want more time. So then we'll bring that up in time like that and and we'll get a uh, longer time being made. And if that's bothering you going off the edge, you can make the the image smaller, which will kick in halfway through. Or I guess that's the long time going. That's really too much time, so we'll reduce it to that. Maybe we got too much alpha now that it's uh, that it's a tight weave. Cool. Okay, so that's that one. And then here's blobs. Blobs, what we're doing is instead of making lines, we are filling the pixels of a bitmap with noise. And so that's X and Y, um, so that's 2D filling, but then a third D to animate through that. So um, our animation is animated. It's, imagine a bunch of, uh, well, three dimensional noise, but connected. This noise is made with equations, so it's it's connected. Um, a, a bunch of 3D noise, and now we're just taking like a slice of it and animating through. We're animating through that slice, and that's what we, we get when we've got blobs. This is saying how much zoomed in on that noise we are. So even zoomed right in on the noise, it, it's very beautiful. What we're seeing is like archetypes here, patterns, uh, hearts and uh, tulips, and you know, this is just amazing. It's the type of thing that we would see. Uh, here, let's let's open that up. This is the type of thing that we would see in in tiles and you know of days of gone by, you know, and beautiful um, architecture and buildings. So uh, it's fantastic. Now let's, we've zoomed in on the noise and we've used a, a smoothing to um, decide to smooth that. And what we're doing is we're animating where that smoothing clamps. If we clamp it more towards the white, then we get more black. If we clamp it more towards the black, then we get more white. So I'm animating that with a, a wiggle, as in wiggle. We're also animating something else, I can't remember. Um, but the sliders, uh, the sliders here control uh, the zooming in on the noise. So there's that. Oh, I think I animate that. Yeah. So I'm animating the zooming in on the noise, but not as much as what you're seeing here. And then I'm using the slider to uh, really animate that like an extra factor. Do you see how that looks like noise? And so that's not even zoomed all the way out. We can get that right to the pixel. But um, and, and it's it's also been tiled. There's a new Zim tile that uh, allows you to tile quickly like that and reflect tiles if you want. So in in part, that's part of the beauty is the fact that we're reflecting this and uh, tiling it, you know, to make that kaleidoscopic look. Okay, so let's go in and see how this is done. Uh, we'll close down our browsers and we'll pop into a Zim fit template here. So we're in Zim, in some code now. We're using 6.2.0. And uh, down into our template we go. We've made a shape. Can you see that? Let me just zoom in a little bit. If my scroll wheel seems to be gone. Scroll wheel! Ah, sorry. Ah, there we go. <laughs> my scroll wheel's back! Woohoo! Okay, so this is the shape that we're going to draw the image in. Oh, what we're looking at here for code, open in browser, is this very first menu. It's a pretty simple example. We've added these three buttons that go up and down, which makes it a little bit more complicated, but um, we'll be able to still see the simple things. 
So we're drawing lines into a shape. So here's the shape, and G is the shape's graphic property, and that's where we draw lines. We're making a bitmap so that when the shape fills up too much, we copy it over to the bitmap, and then we fade out the bitmap. I mean, we keep on drawing the shape, okay? And that allows us to kind of keep on going. So poor man's blitting, it's called B-L-I-T-T-I-N-G. So here's our noise object that we're going to use. Pretty easy. And remember that in the past we had been doing zim dot using the namespace there. You can still use that if you want. And same with up here in the bitmap. Zim dot, etc. But we don't have to anymore. That is now optional. So from now on, I don't think I'm going to be using the namespace. We're saying how many lines we're going to draw, and this is, um, will go across the stage, and this is the maximum height that will go. So it will, it will sort of make the noise, the noise will proportionally move it within 200 up and 200 down. And here's the step that we're going at, that we're going to animate that second dimension in just by 0 0.01. As a matter of fact, you can even drop that to 0 0.001 and still get uh, something that looks cool. Okay, as soon as you're up into point one or something like that, it's just whipping along and, and you've moved too far, you can't see the relationship. Uh, this is the value that we're using to keep track of that step. And here's um, a value overall of how many lines we've made so that we know when to fade out the other lines. You know, and start over again. This is the button for the mesh word that goes up and down. There's the button for the blobs. There's the button for the scarf. And we're cloning those. And then we come into a ticker. I don't even think we need to, I don't think we used fun to clear the ticker, did we? I was playing around with that. Because you, you can put it on pause if you want. So um, if you want the ticker to pause, you need to store the value. Um, when we add this function, we store the value for that. And then later we can say ticker dot remove and whatever, you know, fund or whatever. Okay, and then we can add it again later if we want. Now we did that in some of the other examples, but we didn't in this one, so we should leave that out of there. Okay, we're increasing our count each time and we're increasing our J by the step. So this is what is animating that second dimension for us. We are starting our line. We start our line just at the left hand side in the middle. And we're also using a, an alpha on the line. It turns out that when, uh, normally you don't need to do that. You could just say, hey, make this black. And then you could take your whole shape and make the alpha of the shape lower. And because those lines, those vector lines exist, the alpha will get applied properly. And we'll see, we'll see the alpha of each line as an individual thing. But when we copy over those lines from the shape to the bitmap, the that copying procedure ignores any outside alpha. So unfortunately, the lines get copied over completely black. And then if you alpha the bitmap, it does it still it doesn't work because those lines are all black and they all get alpha equally. So instead, we draw the lines with an alpha uh, right here as we draw the lines. Then when we copy them over, those lines have alpha, real alpha on each one, and and we're good. Okay. So we make some lines. We're looping through now the number of lines that we want, except we don't uh, want the very last line because down here at the bottom, woo, at the bottom, we take that last line and just draw it to the end of the stage. So it's that. And now we're finding out the exposition of the line, except the loop starts at zero. So we add one to it. So sorry for those little adjustments. It's no problem, really. Hopefully you'll figure it out. And then the Y position of that line is based on the noise. So we're going to start at the stage height divided by two, so in the middle, and then we're adding on whatever we're getting from our noise command. So this is the noise object. Here's the method simplex2d. And what that means is we're getting simplex noise, which is a an advancement on Perlin noise. Perlin noise is very famous for making art in this, and you can uh, view that in in Google as well as Simplex noise. And Simplex noise is an advancement made also by Perlin, uh, who's a guy. And then we're using Open Simplex, which is a version that is copyright free. And uh, so anyway, this could read Open Simplex 2D, but it's a little bit lengthy. 
Okay, uh, and here's our two dimensions. I is the X going across, and that will remember a, a value for that, you know, first position. And J is animating that value. J is related to that other value. And as we increase J by just a little, it moves, it makes the other one move just a little. And that's how we're, how the animation is related. Okay, so if we move J too much, it, we almost can't tell that there's a relationship. But if we move it just a little, then it, all of that stuff is made by, all the noise is made by equations. And in the equations, it just moves it just a little bit, and so those lines relate. That's neat. And then we multiply it by the height, because this always gives you a number between uh, minus one and one. Okay, got that? So any noise that we do, even if it's 3D noise, the result of it is just one number between minus one and one. And because we're starting at the stage height, we're multiplying it by the height. So between uh, minus one and one might be like point Two, therefore, it would be 0.2 times the height and move up. You know, uh, whatever the height was, if it was 200.2, do like 40. Okay, so that's how uh, we're <clears throat> getting the y, and then we just plot to that point. There's the x value and there's the y value. We're placing the buttons here, placing the buttons uh, at that point as well. <laughs> so don't worry about that. You would normally be placing buttons. And then here's our last line where we're drawing. You almost don't have to worry about that either. Often when we're making it, like if you look at the um, the mesh example, we don't start at the middle at the left and we don't end at the middle at the right. Uh, I just kind of like the look of that in this case, so I chose to take those two points and make them special. All right. Otherwise, uh, in many cases, you're just working right inside your loop and not really outside your loop for the start and the finish. But there are times when you do. For instance, if you wanted to connect those two together, and I thought of doing that, and maybe uh, on the mesh example, I may want to connect the start line and the end line. I think that might look better than leaving a line, but when I viewed the art that it was making, I decided, hey, I kind of like the part that has just the line going as opposed to a corner. If you connect the two, you've always got corners. So, um, here's a little bit of that. Now, this is the part that is saying, hey, if we've made 200 lines, then, uh, then go ahead and cache the shape, make the bitmaps image, set the bitmap image to the shape's cache canvas. So when you cache a shape, it, shape, it makes a, a CreateJS makes a canvas of its own just for that, just for that cache shape. And then you can take that canvas and put it into the image of the bitmap. Uh, and then we uncache the shape so we can continue to draw in it and we clear it. And then we're animating that bitmap out so that's fading it out to zero. Okay, so that's a blitting process. And that's it. Those are the controls of the background. In each of the cases, by the way, we've um, put the controls uh, we've drawn some lines there, uh, you know, big fat lines, uh, boxes, I guess, <laughs> rectangles is a big fat line of color. Uh, we put a little help icon in there and the title on top. Uh, that's where the sliders go. And what we're doing is you'll have to look through that. We're using the sliders to adjust, adjust things. This one doesn't have any sliders, but there's this bit around the outside is our uh, what we call the controls. So if we go into one, for instance, uh, the scarf, here are the controls. And all we're doing is as we change the slider here, as we change the slider, we're using the slider to animate um, certain or to change certain uh, properties in the loop primarily. Because in that loop, that's, you know, that's our difference. So now the difference is less. Now the difference is more. Okay, it's a pretty easy process actually. Putting all these controls into this took less than an hour, sort of thing. I like the controls though. Take a look at it, and and you can see how it was almost an exercise in interface as well. We've tried to match the slider a little bit to the dial. Uh, we've made all the things very basic and flat and simple. Probably what I would do if I had a little bit more time is as I roll over the interface area, not maybe the middle, but the interface area, I would 
pop up labels on everything. So a little label would appear here, 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 maybe here, you know, just, just up above each one perhaps. And then when I roll off, those labels would go away. I think that would be kind of a neat minimal design. I like the idea of experimenting. Some of this is a bit tricky where you to you might not quite understand, you know, what this is doing. Oh, what's going on here? Can't, can't quite tell. Oh yeah, I think maybe it's all getting bigger, you know? <laughs> okay, so, uh, but some people don't even use a dial until they know what it does. <laughs> you know, it just kills me. It's like, well, just use a slider and you can see what it does. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they sort of like, I'm not going to use that because I don't know what it does. <laughs> so a little bit of an exercise in interface. Isn't it great? I love this noise. And thanks a lot to Frank Loss, by the way, for um, for suggesting that we get noise going on here. I've been wanting to do this for years. I've seen Natsuki do ribbons back in Flash, you know, <laughs> 20, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, something like that. So um, this has been around in the coding world, and it's uh, sort of part of uh, processing. It's part of Unity, uh, you know, to have noise to make trains. Doesn't that look like trains, like a space mountain and stuff? And so you can even um, adjust that more. Oh, part of this angle, which one's the angle? This, no, that's the lines. One of them is an angle on this, isn't it? Yeah, that's the angle. So if we drop this right to zero, uh, there's mountains. Okay, so that sort of makes the kind of uh, mountain shape similar to our very first index example. And you can use this to make 3D terrain too in, in something like 3JS. Uh, et cetera, or in Unity. And we have the ability to, to bring 3JS right into here. So we could use these controls and make 3JS terrains right here in Zim, the terrains being provided by, uh, by 3JS. Also just launched um, was CreateJS 1. And this latest version of Zim is all ready. Let's just slow that down a bit while we're talking. We'll make the lines a bit bigger. Slow it down though. Mm -hmm. And what's this one? This is the number of lines, fewer lines there. All right, so also um, available in CreateJS 1 is a stage GL where we can um, put this on the GPU. And Zim has been ready for that for a while. We saw the next version of CreateJS back a little while ago. And there's a GPU parameter. There's also an excellent uh, video on the GPU. Let's just pop into the Zim site now. Oh, do, 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 zim. and go to the docs and then hit updates right here. So 6.2 updates. There they are. And what we've done is we put a link to, where was it? Right here, this watch right here. So uh, updated Zim to work with that and uh, see the bubbling video uh, right here. So in the updates, there's a bubbling video about using stage, um, stage GL it's called. And so that's using the GPU in CreateJS and in Zim. All right, and also part of this update was, um, was tiling and the noise and this thing called smooth step, uh, as well as improvements to how we draw image data we added, added things so that we can draw image data to that. So have a read over the the updates. And that, my friends, is what's bubbling a Zim. Have a great day. I'm Inventor Dan Zen. Uh, come on into ZimJS.com and try this stuff out. Ciao. I have to go off. I'm, I'm presenting for an art bus that's coming around. I do light shows with these types of things. And so I'm presenting to an art bus uh, at the Casbah, <laughs> we'll call it the Oasis, where I'll be showing the light shows and some of this uh, creating art with noise. Here in Hamilton, we're experiencing this cultural revolution. It's, it's pretty amazing. I love it with uh, the art crawl and stuff like that. I like being part of that. Ciao.